Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and today we're going to talk about NASBA. Uh, GLS is a NASBA sponsor of CPE and recently those rules changed. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about what does it mean to be a NASBA sponsor? Um, why do I make you answer polling questions? Why are there so many polling questions? Uh, hopefully we'll answer some of those questions we get pretty frequently uh, as we go through here. So we're going to talk about the 2024 um, CPE standards. So these CPE standards are actually jointly issued by the AICPA and NASBA, the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy, and they are deemed to be best practices in continuing professional education. Now, we talk about NASBA states and non-NASBA states. Not all states require NASBA. In fact, I live in North Carolina, and the only time our CPE requirements make reference to NASBA is our ethics requirement. Ethics must be taught by a NASBA sponsor. Um, other than that, you can take CPE from anybody. Other states have different requirements. Uh, and so the highest level of assurance with respect to um, requirements for CPE is NASBA. And it's always, in my opinion, the best practice to use those highest set of standards. And so the Statement of Standards for Continuing Professional Education Programs was updated and issued in January 2024. Um, and as a NASBA sponsor, we are subject to these standards. So first and foremost, we need some terms. Um, and they did make some changes here. Um, and the terms that are important they're actually learning terms. If you took a course in adult learning theory or instructional design, you would hear about asynchronous and synchronous. So asynchronous is a learning activity um, in which the participant has control over time, place, or pace of learning. Um, and so historically, when we think about this, um, you can do this on demand, right? You can do it whenever you want. You don't have to be with other people in the classroom. You don't have to wait for an instructor to be there. Asynchronous learning um, happens on your time. Synchronous learning is a learning activity in which the participants engage simultaneously with a real-time instructor. Um, now, previously, they didn't have the term instructor in the definition under NESBA. It just said in which participants engage simultaneously in learning. Um, but the focus now on NESBA is that you have to have a real-time instructor. And synchronous just means that you're all at the same time with somebody available to answer your questions. Now, that can be what we call a proctored rebroadcast, where the recording happened previously, but we play it at a certain time and there is somebody available to answer questions in the chat pod should that come in, right? That is a synchronous. Everyone is on the same time period and there's someone there to answer questions, real-time instructor. Asynchronous is on demand, take it whenever you want, stop, start, stop, start, you know, answer questions and get your certificate whenever you are ready for it. Um, no instructor around. And those are two really important terms because that helps us understand when we issue CPE certificates, what type of CPE certificate you're going to get. So we have different types of programs uh, in NASBA. We have three that we offer. There are more, there's Nano, there's others, um, but we're gonna focus on the three that GLS offers. Um, so the first one is group internet-based, and that is when you take a class over the internet with us. So individual participation in a synchronous group learning program. So there is a group of people and they're taking a live webinar, right? So it's a synchronous, we're all at the same time, real time interaction of the instructor or subject matter expert, built in processes for attendance and interactivity, right? Those are your polling questions. So group internet based is when we um, opt instead of coming in person, we do a live webinar. That is a group internet based program. Group live is a synchronous, again, all at the same time, learning program in a group environment with real time interaction of participants with each other and with an instructor or subject matter expert that provides the required elements of attendance monitoring and engagement, right? So even in a live course, there still has to be engagement. You can't just lecture for eight hours and call that CPE. That's what doesn't recognize that. There has to be an element of engagement each hour and then attendance monitoring to make sure that you're getting uh, the time that's appropriate. And then we have self-study, right? And this is asynchronous program of learning completed individually without the assistance or interaction of a real-time instructor, right? You take it when you want, where you want. There's no one on the uh, line waiting to answer your questions, right? And so these are the three types of learning that you can purchase from Golasso Learning Solutions. All right, so let's talk about group live. So what does it mean to be group live? So this is when uh, typically we are in person, right? So if I come to your location and I teach a course, 
but it doesn't have to be exactly that. Uh, and that is something that they worked really hard on in this 2024 update. So whether a program is classified as group live or group internet based is determined by how the participant interacts with other participants and the instructor and not by the technology used. So obviously a physical classroom setting with a real time instructor is group live. That's the most obvious, easy version. But now they've added internet enabled two way video participation, right? Where we're interacting with each other and I have to be able to see you. I have to be able to interact with you. I have to have a video going as we go through this. We'll talk a little bit about that um, as we go through. Um, participation in a group setting uh, and calling into a uh, conference call. They used to call it teleconference into a conference call. Um, and so in this scenario uh, where everybody is interacting uh, together, um, but the um, the conference calls where you're getting the information from or watching a live broadcast or rebroadcast again with a real time subject matter expert facilitator. So it's not about whether it's live um, per se in terms of the education, it's about the people being able to interact with each other and with the instructor. Group internet based is whether it's classified again as group live or group interface is how they interact with each other. And so as we go through this, a webcast is a great example, um, but it also could be internet participation to a way that complies with S1603. And we'll talk about the difference in a second. Um, internet uh, or then broadcast of a group live presentation, right? So where we were group live and now we're rebroadcasting it, um, that would now move it into a um, group internet based and then conference calls. So let's talk about polling questions because we get a lot of why are there so many polling questions or I felt overwhelmed. Well, we have to do attendance monitoring. Um, and so when we talk about attendance monitoring, it must be of sufficient frequency and lack of predictability. So it can't be every 12 minutes, for example. Um, and it has to have at least three instances of interactivity um, per CPE credit. We offer four per hour simply because if you miss one, you still get credit because you've answered three. Um, <clears throat> so uh, again, that is why we have polling questions. Those are considered to be attendance monitoring. So one of the things they've required now, this used to be a best practice, but is a requirement, is that in order to get uh, in a group internet based program, the sponsor has to communicate how. So we have a slide that we've added to our programs that say how many polls we're gonna have per hour, how many they need to answer in order to get full credit. And so we've added that slide to meet the requirements of this change. So we're also often asked about hybrid. Well, can we have some people in the room and some people online? This is one, gonna cost extra, and two, very complicated. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. The first one is where the individual participants log into a group live program. So the instructor is present with a, the group. Um, however, the other individuals log in and are required to enable two-way video, meaning we have to see your face with your camera on in order to get CPE. And we actually have to have an attendance monitor, someone whose sole job in the world is to make sure that you are online. Um, and so obviously that costs extra to have a participant monitor. Um, but we, a lot of times people say hybrid. Hybrid is not an offering uh, that NASBA offers. So internet enable two-way video participation of a group live program. Um, the other option that people ask about is, well, can't you just issue it two different ways, right? So in that scenario for the group live people, uh, issue it group live, and then for the online people, do the group internet based. We can do that, but again, it costs extra because you have to have polling for those who are online and you have to have engagement for the people in person. So they're very clear here. The group live program participants must be monitored for attendance. The group live has to have the element of engagement the group internet base has to answer the polling questions and they have to meet the other requirements. And so it's basically running two classes at the same time. Um, and so as we go through this, NASBIT is trying to make this easier for CPE providers, um, but it does take additional effort. And so uh, we get a lot of questions about this, which is why I wanted to address this. Now there may be others who don't charge extra for these services, but do know that we do it only because we wanna have the best quality and we wanna really meet these requirements. And we follow the NASBIT requirements very um, carefully because I think it's important um, that we are able to show the quality of the work that we do. 
So if you are interested in QAS self-study, you can join us on our LC Vista platform, gls.lcvista.com. If you are interested in those proctored rebroadcasts, which come up as those group internet based, you can do it at gls.advancedcpe.com. Um, or you can obviously join us in one of our live settings. All right, guys, that's a wrap. I know it's a little bit of a longer blog, but I wanted to cover all of these great changes that are happening in Nesba and answer some of the frequently asked questions that we get uh, occasionally. So thank you guys so much for joining me, and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.